without any further ado, Balnor, why don't you take us away with our two players here tonight? Spawning in the top right corner we have from Team Fnatic, it is the pink Protoss player, Fnatic Pink. Opposing him on the other side is going to be from Team Samsung Galaxy. All the way from Korea, it is Solar the Purple Zerg. He is indeed, so... PVZ, a matchup of many things right now. Immortal Sentry Orleans, probably not on this map though. You know, Swarm Host, you know, a lot of talk about PVZ in general. What's your current feel about you know, PVZ? My current feel about PVZ is that sometimes, you know, if, if the Protoss player does not go and kill you with an all-in, which would, as you said, be quite unlikely given the spawn positions on this map, uh, then the game tends to go for a little while longer, and unless the Protoss player can find a very particular timing um, before the game hits really late, late stages to try and kill the Zerg opponent, um, he will more often than not opt to play defensively and build a very, very strong army, and at that point, uh, mostly the Zerg uh, has to revert or, or has to go swarm host at that point because uh, once you have a really high number of void rays and storms and you know it's very difficult to engage such an army um, and the Protoss player most of the time is not going to be as stupid as to engage you in an open space where the four skills are not as good and uh, he'll try to fight in chokes. So really, what other options do you have? You have to respond, um, respond with a defensive play of your own, get a couple of swarm hosts and try to drag the game out and just nibble away at your opponent uh, one minute after another. That, that's what I think, at least. We have really greedy openings from both players here on either side of the map. Pink starts up with Nexus first and then into a gateway in fact. So just not even going for a forge and it uh, will pay off for him here of course. The solar opens hatch first before pool. So, you know, both players playing as you would expect on this map so far and looking already to maybe head into that later game. Uh, of course, neither know quite yet that it's cross spawns. So, um, you know, there's, there's still for Pink that uh, thought in his head that he may go into one build or another depending on where he does scout solar. So. Options still open right here. Pink's going to start walling off. And uh, I mean, let's just think about these two players we've got right here right now. I mean, Pink is this player who, since joining Fnatic Academy, has just got better and better and better. And this is actually his second S2 Improve event. He dropped out in the round 16 of the Summer League um, to Storm and, I believe, Lucky, I think. Um, but, I mean, he's a great player, and I'd expect him to go far if his first opponent wasn't the guy who just yesterday came out and aced for Samsung Galaxy in Pro League. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good point you made, the, made there just now, Wordy, and uh, you know, I, I can imagine that Pink is having a lot of respect for the guy he's playing against right now, but at the same time, if you, if you have aspirations of being a professional gamer, being able to take games off of anybody you cannot have this mindset yes you should be careful of certain things uh, because you're playing a, against a very uh, heavily trained and experienced opponent but you cannot be afraid of him now interestingly enough solar uh, has opened gasless this game and is only just now taking his gases uh, but we see no third base as he did find out that this was a gateway opening for the time being uh, he sees also this uh, this forge, so he knows that probably a gateway push is out of the question, uh, and we can see confirmation of this uh, due to the fact that we have a Stargate coming up. Will Solar know what is up uh, before the first Oracles or Phoenixes or what have you start flying about and uh, start dealing some damage? I think he will. I mean, we've got this first Overlord already getting in position on the kind of the left-hand side of the main. He may very well wait for his Overlord to get to the natural as well, so he can fly in two places at the same time just to maximize his scouting. But, I mean, already seen the Forge, it kind of tells him, right, well, you're not going to attack me in the very, very near future because you're going to invest in at least an upgrade, otherwise your Forge is completely wasted. Yeah. So, Solo knows he's got a little bit of time, and, you know, Pink, he's going to go Overlord hunting with these Phoenixes, and then Solo's going to know, you know, know what's up. We actually see a, a, what I think is a very fast lair from Solo. Yeah, it is a very fast lair. Two additional gases being taken, and we have a single evolution chamber going down. 
uh, with the Roach Wern. Uh, so this could turn into into an aggression, and uh, uh, Solar may try to take a third base behind doing this, uh, what, I, what I believe will be Roach-based attack. Now on the side of Fnatic Pink, I wonder how many Phoenixes he's going to be making, because he is getting the plus one from his Forge. Uh, he's transitioning very quickly into a Robo facility. If he makes only like three Phoenixes, uh, he can actually uh, tech switch rather fast, which is not what you, what we usually have been seeing from Protoss players. Um, uh, usually Protosses get like four to five Phoenixes in order to be able to uh, kill Queens. And there's the Twilight Council going down, so I actually think this might be blink play with, uh, with plus one or pl optionally plus two. Fourth Phoenix in production, so uh, Pink making a yeah, little bit you more. Know, this looks a lot like something that Patience loves to do, which uh -huh. is, you know, goes up to plus two nice and quickly, stock boosting out a bunch of immortals and getting blink. And, you know, you can take a fairly fast third base with this, and, well, actually, it's not going to be that open oh. on Robo Base. So that, that changes things. A Robo Bay fairly quickly here, considering this is PvZ, just going to go straight to Colossi. We don't see that too often anymore. Yeah, and uh, the scouting here is going to be very important for uh, for Pink. He did see how late, how terribly late the third base was, so he mm. should be preparing mm. for an, for, uh, for uh, aggression from the Korean right now. He Queens at the front. Uh, getting he won't up. get it, but yeah, transfuse Sola, is too strong, man. <laughs> yeah, Sola, Sola knew exactly that he was able to be out there with that Queens. You know, he knew it wasn't like a mistake by him, and that he's got off looking. He knew he was safe to be out there, so mm. completely fine. He's getting his third base finishing now, and you know this is really nice time for the third base of Pink. It's nice and early compared to the third of the Zerg, and you know really Sola should probably look to rush out a fourth base of his own. We do see a few roaches for Sola moving across the map, and that's why I would have liked to see at least one immortal for Pink because what immortal makes this trivial? This little push that uh, Sola's doing right now. So, either way, I think Pink's not going to take too much damage here. You and, know, uh, Sola. Well, he is reinforced with a few more roaches, and they yeah. do have plus one. Yeah, they do, and the, uh, they have a Glial reconstitution and Burrow as well. And I, I, I think uh, Pink is being led on here a little bit by Solar because Solar already has his infestation pit finished. You know, and he yeah. knew that Pink saw how late that third base was. He knew Pink is going to be expecting aggression, so he would be a little bit more cautious in taking that third base. And this number of roaches will be quite enough to keep Pink pinned back in there's, his main base, and Solar can actually down. take out the third. Solar actually burrowed that roach that got caught by the force field, and yeah, Pink's third's gonna go down here. So Pink really may be being a little bit too greedy, you know, not investing in any immortals or anything. The Phoenixes do come back now, and he is gonna maybe try and hold this, but with only a single cross, so, you know, there's nothing to really protect that cross. And Pink can't realistically fight. He doesn't have range here, and Solo getting ready to just go into small posts behind this. And these roaches, you know, a few of them are gonna die off, but kill on the third base and killing off the earlier sentries that they already got. Oh, they might oh, get the Colossus! Gonna... It's gonna be close there. Pink's oh. just gonna maybe get away. But he's taken so much damage on the rest of his ground army, and Sola just... Well, I mean, Pink's just really not prepared for this kind of aggression, and Sola, with a few roaches, is still attacking behind this. And guess what? What do we have behind this for Solar? Swarm host, Spire going up, and Solar will be producing quite a number of those Swarm Hosts uh, shortly here, and then probably will be taking a fourth base right over here uh, to increase his gas income so that he can transition into Hive Tech. And, you know, the Spire might actually be for a Muta Switch because he knows Pink's army is... Uh, uh, well, he does have still a large number of Phoenixes, so I'm, I'm talking bullshit here a little bit, but... Uh, uh, it, it could still happen in later stages of the game once the Phoenixes are gone, but will we get there as another Colossus falls, Wardy, and only three sentries are all that's remaining of yeah. Pink's army here? This gets worse and worse, because of course he needs his Colossi to deal with follow-up, and I mean, he doesn't even have range yet, because he's just having to reinvest into so many new sentries, so many new Colossi, and... I mean, what he should be at three Colossi now, and he's at one very damaged Colossi. And, mm. I mean, look at the creep spread for Solo. He's just getting into an aggressive position with these swarmers. A few of them already moving out on the map here. And, oh, uh, and more I mean, roaches Solo's popping gonna, out. He's yeah, going he, to complement those uh, those swarmers, and he will be aggressively pushing with them. I really like this. Uh, uh, that's a lot more dynamic play than what we usually see when you play swarmers, aka Stefano style. Uh, this is this is a lot more likable, and uh, oh, th this might just break pink here. Interesting thing to note before I before I give you a word, Wardy, is that resources lost so far are pretty much equal between these guys, which is quite surprising considering how much damage Pink took. 
Yeah, it's uh, it, it's kind of weird. Pink hasn't actually lost any probes. And I mean, to be fair, so has thrown a lot of roaches away. But the thing is, he's thrown away these low-tech units. For these high-tech units of Pink, and it's not really the resources that matter, because, I mean, Solo's quite happily on an even slash better economy than Pink. It's the fact that Pink needs the higher number of Colossi, and mm -hmm. we see him, he's getting a second Robo now. His plus three is on the way, which is something he does have going for him quite nicely, but already the Locusts are barraging on his front do door, and he just has nothing. I mean, he barely has any sentries because he's lost so many of them, and... Yeah. Uh, he's I mean, going, to, be have uh, to, so he's going to have to wait this out a little bit until he has enough, uh, enough Colossi, but here come the Corruptors. There's not a whole lot of anti-air here for Pink. He's got, I, I mean, he's got six Stalkers and three sentries. Six Phoenixes are going to be helping out a ton against these Corruptors because there is not that many of them, but at least one Colossus will go down. Actually, both of those might go down, leaving only one Colossus here as more and more Corruptors and Locusts are going to be streaming in. The ground army is all but gone for pink. All that's remaining are these Phoenixes. Emergency warp in of Stalkers happening at the third base, but Solar with 12 more Roaches on the way, plus two just about to finish, and fourth base almost done. Yeah, this is uh, this is Solo just continuing to walk all over Pink. The supplies tell the whole story, but past the supplies, I mean, we even see roaches just walking in the main. We see just constant barrels of their uh, swarm host locusts hitting the third base. Corruptors just camping over the base in case any more colossi dare to pop out. And uh, I mean, this third base is going to die. And Pink's actually trying to take a fourth to the top left, but it's just a slow death for him here as uh, these stalkers. Do you know a hot, all right this job against what's here? But there's no real answer to the corruptors. The stalkers aren't in big enough number to keep the glossy alive. Queen's even surviving, transfusing each other. And well, there's the locust. Just say, GG to this tap out game number one here. It's a fairly expected result. Could he have played a bit better? I think he could have. I think he got a little bit overzealous with uh, what he was attempting. Yeah, I think uh, you know uh, you're getting you're getting a twilight. You want to go into plus two. Sim uh, at the same time, you want to go colossus. You don't have that gateway count yet. You have your third on the way, and suddenly. A group of 15 roaches appear at your doorstep. That's that can't be a good position. And I really do think, as the GG is called by Pink, I really do think that he was, um, you know, he he was being led this entire game by Solar. I mean, we can we could see from start to finish of this first match that Solar was basically dictating the tempo. He was dictating when and what Pink is able and allowed to do, and he was just in control from start to finish. So. I don't. I don't really actually think he was in under any kind of threat from Pink. No, I don't think he was.